Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very glad to see that so many people came for the opening session of the third in the series of conferences which we call OISIS, which are dedicated to optics and to electro-optics. And I'd like first to thank Professor Hench and Professor Russell. What happened to the microphone? Died. Died. Okay, you'll hear me. Um, and for all the other invited speakers who came from uh, many countries to participate in this uh, meeting. And uh, what I would like to do is to spend maybe five or six minutes just on the light, and especially light in, in Israel. So I'd like to start by saying that uh, mankind has always been scared of darkness, and the word dark has a negative connotation in the, all the languages. It's a gloomy, pessimistic, the dark ages, the, uh, they were not so dark, but the Middle Ages, and Prince of Darkness in many languages is Satan or the devil. On the other hand, light has always uh, had a positive connotation, bright illumination, enlightenment movements, and so on. And it's not surprising that in the mythologies of the creation of the world, it's almost in all cultures, light emerges from darkness. And I give you ancient Egypt, uh, that was water, chaos, and um, then the sun god Ra emerged from the primary chaos, and he came out from a giant lotus flower, and Ra gave light to the universe. In the Jewish culture, uh, just in the beginning of uh, Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then God separated between light and darkness. And almost exactly the same wording appeared in the Sumerian and Babylonian cultures and many, many other cultures. In ancient world, people not only talked about the world, about the word light, but also used light. And it's surprising that several thousand years ago, people uh, used light for applications that uh, we are going to talk about in this conference, like medicine or communication. So let me give you one example in medicine. There are other examples, and that's photochemotherapy. That's combination of drug and light. And the idea is, for example, as, uh, almost uh, in 2000 before Christ, 4,000 years ago, people were interested in the treatment uh, of diseases, skin diseases, uh, like vitiligo, which has uh, white patches on the skin, or psoriasis, where they have white patches with scaling. And in our Bi uh, Bible, there is a Hebrew word, tsara'at, which may not be leprosy, but maybe the uh, this disease. So the um, patients were asked to eat some uh, flower uh, or some plant, or sometimes the physicians spread the extract of the, of the plant on the skin. And in Egypt, they, they used uh, a plant called Amni Majus, and in India, they, uh, they used a different plant. Both plants have a chemical called uh, psoralen. And today, the, the uh, People use, the physicians use exactly the same thing. Yes, that if you uh, read in the literature, PUVA, that's uh, Soralen plus UVA. So it's the same type of treatment uh, for disease today. And the whole area is called photodynamic therapy, and it's used for cancer treatment and for age-related degenerate macula. So this is a very, very old uh, idea. Now, optical communications. Again, in Israel, during the time of the Second Temple, and that's roughly from 500 BC, and the Jewish calendar is based is a lunar calendar. It was very important for people in Israel and in the diaspora to know when is the beginning of the month, because most of our holidays are in the, uh, roughly the middle of the month. So what happened is that in Jerusalem, um, there were witnesses who saw the new moon, and when that was uh, discovered, they used to lit fires or torches on Mount of Olives, and then they moved from hill to hill. There were people with torches who transmitted the information from Jerusalem to uh, Pumbedita in Babylon, which is today Fallujah in Iraq. So optical communication is also a very, very old uh, idea. Now I move from ancient times 
to the Middle Ages and the name Maimonides, known for every Jew, one of the greatest <coughs> scholars of the Jewish culture. Uh, we call him Rambam. His name was Moses ben Maimon. And you see that he uh, lived in the 12th century. And he was a philosopher, a physician, a rabbi, wrote many famous books, including the Guide to the Perplexed. And he represents in Judaism enlightenment. That's a connection to light. And he was born in Spain, and then he lived in Morocco and Egypt, and may have been buried in Tiberias. It's not clear. And why do I mention him? Because in May 1960, uh, Theodor Maiman uh, discovered the laser. Um, and last year, we celebrated the year of the laser. And Maiman was here, and he gave a colloquium at Tel Aviv University many years ago. And he definitely opened an era, a new era in science, and many of us are using lasers or studying lasers. Maiman, in his talk, said that he is a descendant of Maimonides. And he purchased, in that visit, uh, an apartment in Tiberias uh, because he felt that he belongs to the Maimonides family. Now, as far as Israel goes, um, I repeat what I uh, said two years ago, that actually physics started in Israel by three German Jews who escaped from uh, Nazi Germany, and uh, these are their names, uh, uh, Samburski and Wolfson and Ernst Alexander. Samburski and Alexander were among my teachers, and, as you see, uh, and Wolfson unfortunately died in the War of Independence, but two of the three who were among the first physicists in the state of Israel after 2,000 years, two of the three worked in optics. So the optics research in optics in universities started roughly in 1930. And as far as optics industry in Israel, uh, the pioneer was uh, Goldberg, who was born in Russia, but educated in Germany. He was the head of Zeiss Econ. Uh, in the uh, research laboratories, then in the time of the Nazis he was caught and then he was released. And he immigrated to Israel in 1937 and started something that was called Goldberg Instrument. And that was the beginning of uh, LOP, which is one of the largest um, industries in optics and uh, electro-optics. So I switched from ancient times to 2011. In 2011, after more than 80 years of optics in Israel. We, uh, more than 7,000 people, it's estimated, work in the fields of optics and electro-optics. There are 250 companies, and the annual export of these industries is around $4 billion. And I guess that most of the people here represent industry, research institutions, and uh, universities. And with this, I'll uh, end my short introduction. And I'd like to introduce Professor Danny Weiss, who is the Chief Scientist of the Ministry of Science and Technology, who will start the session. Thank you. I'm here to represent uh, Rabbi Professor Daniel Herskovitz, the uh, Minister of Science and Technology. Uh, he couldn't make it today. As you know, Wednesday is Cabinet Day, so I'm here to represent him. Uh, because most of our name is the same, so it's easy. The professor and Daniel is the same, so it's just the last name. As some of you may know, I split my time between serving as chief scientist of the Ministry of Science and Technology and uh, at the Technion Autonomous Systems. This meeting interests me from both caps, actually. First of all, I'm very happy to see the first time in any meeting that it's a meeting of engineering and science. Usually we hear science and engineering. At last, we are going the right direction. I'm an aerospace engineer. Um, I, I was planning to start with some history. It was taken away from me, but I mentioned two things that you didn't mention. One of them is the god of light in Egypt. His name is Ra. In Hebrew, that means bad. So someone needs to explain that, how that happened. But also, actually, the first optical engineer I know is the designer of Stonehenge. And if uh, some of you have visited Ireland, there's a, uh, there's a mount there that's even older than Stonehenge, in which at exactly uh, 12 uh, p.m. on March 21, the light goes through a whole mount, which is about 3,000 years old, and that started the date and calendar at the time. So optical engineering actually started not only in medicine, it also started as timekeeping. 
and is really probably the second oldest engineer.